Hello and welcome to another Monodac UX demo video. Today, something very interesting. We'll be trying to get a discharge curve from this lithium battery. Now, if you're not familiar with it, a discharge curve is one of these. You can get just basic information like capacity from that curve, or you can do more interesting things. For example, you could construct some sort of state of charge estimation system based on that curve. So that's our goal. And in order to obtain a discharge curve, we will need to discharge the battery at a constant discharge current. So the rest of the setup you're seeing here is a way to achieve a constant discharge with the mono deck. So what's going on here? Taking a look at the current loop first, starting at the battery, uh, the current flows to the MOSFET, through the MOSFETs to the shunt, through the shunt now the current is measured by these two wires on the shunt and then back to the battery. Now the most in interesting part of the circuit are these two MOSFETs here, they're just wired in parallel to get a bit more current through, but these aren't normal MOSFETs, these are linear MOSFETs. Now, usually a normal MOSFET would be used either, either um, at a very high resistance or a very low resistance, so as a switch. Now these here can operate in the in-between region, so basically these can act as uh, variable resistors. And the monodeck has a power supply channel, which can be driven by another signal. So what we're actually doing is we're measuring the current with the shunt, we're doing some math in the mono deck and based on the current here, we are sending uh, a voltage to the gate. So if the current is too high, we can reduce the voltage in the gate. If the current is, is too low, we can do the opposite and increase the voltage. And that's how we can regulate the current. And everything uh, is running like a PID controller in there. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention, we had some free channels, so I also added a thermocouple directly taped onto the surface of the cell so we can monitor the cell discharge temperature as well. So let's move over to the software and do a measurement. Welcome to X3, taking a look at the channel setup. We have the first channel used to get the battery voltage. We have another voltage input with a smaller range. This one is used to get the shunt's voltage and calculate the current. Then a thermocouple to get the cell's temperature. And finally, a power supply, which is used to control the gate and control the current. We also have some user inputs. The first one is the shunt's resistance, which is a constant, which the user sets before uh, using the program. Ours is 8.15 milliohms. And then the current target, which is the current at which we wish to discharge the cell. Uh, let's take a look at the math. We have a couple of channels here as well. First one is current, just calculates the current from the shunt voltage and shunt resistance. We, we also calculate the power from the current and the cell voltage. Then we have the PID control, which we will skip for a second. Uh, here we integrate the current and power over time to get both the current and power capacity. Um, this is the discharge capacity because we are integrating uh, in amps in amp seconds, this is just to convert to milliamp hours, which is a more familiar unit. And finally, just some basic statistics to do some averaging to make things nicer to display. Now this PID is really the most important part here, so yeah, let's take a closer look. The purpose of this PID controller is to regulate the output current. So as an input, we use the measured current, and as the wanted target, we use the user settable current target variable. Now, the elegant part is here with the output channel, because if we select the power as the output channel, this means that the PID controller will drive the integrated power supply's voltage as an output. And since that is connected to the gate, uh, to the MOSFET gate, this is how we can actually control the current flowing through the system. While having this setup as is will work, there is one problem, and this is it's going to discharge our battery completely. Um, so we have set up an alarm to solve this problem and we have a simple edge trigger and when this battery voltage reaches 2.5 volts it's going to stop the PID controller stopping and finishing our test. Everything is set up so I think we're ready to head over to the measure tab. This might seem like a lot to take in but it's not really too bad. So 
At the bottom are the most um, important controls. So here we can see the battery voltage. We can see the current. This, uh, this actually has two needles. The yellow one is the current target and the red one is going to be our actual current. Uh, we have the power and we also have the cell temperature. It's pretty hot right now, so that's why it's fairly high. And I'll just go ahead and enter the current which uh, we want to discharge the battery with and it's going to be a 5 amp discharge. And as soon as I press enter, uh, the, the procedure is going to start and I should really start storing the data. Um, there we go. Okay, so you can see the voltage increasing and soon you're going to see the current start to increase. There we go. And it hits the target perfectly. And you can you can also um, keep an eye on the current here. It's a bit more, it's easier to read and more accurate value from this digital value. You can see that we're discharging at 20 watts. And this is a good time to add a little fan to the system because the heatsink is going to get quite hot if we don't cool it. So you might just hear that. But now a fan is blowing cool air through it, uh, cooling the heatsink. And you can see that this graph right here, this is going to be our discharge curve. So on the x-axis, we have the discharge capacity and on the y-axis, we have the voltage. And you can already see that the voltage has dropped down. And um, if you look at this side, this is our discharge capacity. Now, the battery that we are currently discharging uh, is supposed to be a 4200 milliamp battery but that's the maximum rating so we can expect somewhere between 4000 and 4200 milliamp hours uh, yeah so keep an eye on the current you can see the power everything oh and the power of course as the voltage is going to drop over time and the current is going to be constant um, you will be able to see the power drop down but I just like to draw your attention to the current here because we are pretty much always in the 0 0.01 amp range so within 10 milliamps of the set current which considering we have spent what less than $20 for the components here uh, and considering that a electronic load capable of something like this would cost probably at least a magnitude more than this uh, is a fairly impressive result. So I'm just going to speed up the video now and um, you'll see the discharge curve grow and hopefully we'll get that result that we're expecting. And here we go. After the complete test, we have a beautiful discharge curve. Uh, now in the time lapse, you might have seen it bottom out around here, but this was because I hadn't set up the scale correctly. I now moved it from uh, the bottom part of the scale from 3 to 2.5 volts and now you can see the entire uh, nice discharge curve. You might be wondering about this final bit where it's pretty much a straight vertical line. This is normal, this is because the measurement uh, was still taking place after the discharge has stopped and when you remove the current from the battery, when you stop draining the battery, the voltage slowly starts rising up again. So that's why this, this bit of the battery is here. You can also see how the uh, temperature changed over it. Um, at the start, it didn't rise that quickly because the fan we used was actually blowing over the battery as well. But mid measurement, I actually blocked the airflow over the battery. So at that point, you can see it starts rising. And then here, uh, the current cuts off and then you can see the temperature drop, drop back down. So we have a beautiful measurement completed and I think that for what we use this is really an excellent result. So thanks for watching and see you next time.